I'm so much better pre-recorded. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode number 10 of, uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 10 of Number 1 Crude Mistakes with your hosts KJ from Crude But Efficient, Glenn from Number 1 Projects and Havard from Behind the Mistakes and for the first time ever a special guest, me, Thomas from Mellow Labs. Woohoo, it's the 10th episode and we have a guest here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is usually what I have to work with, so yeah. Hi, I'm Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> nice to be here. <laughs> nice to have you here. Very nice Thank to have you, you here. Thomas, been, Mr. Been, Mellow Labs. Good to see you, Thomas. Coming. <laughs> it, it's actually weird to see all of you. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm used to either seeing you in videos or just listening to your voice on the podcast, but now that I get to actually see you, it's a strange experience. Which, which one is the weirdest to see? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Uh, I uh, I wouldn't say weird. I'm I'm I've seen the uh, the the mustache that Crude has. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it on Instagram, but seeing it like 360 going around, it looks good. <laughs> looks good. I wouldn't say good, but thanks, <laughs> thanks for the kind words. I mean, you, 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 my my mustache doesn't want to connect. I've got like empty bits here, and yeah. for, no matter what I try to do, it just does not want to connect. Me too. Oh, you should, this, you this should just save over. the top one to be longer so it covers <laughs> yeah. over the I'm gap. trying, I'm trying. I grab them and I pull them down every so often, but it's still, still yeah. not working very well. And while you're waiting for those parts to get long enough, then you can twist them to get this, uh, like, uh, <laughs> twirly bit kind of, hair of mustache. Gel, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. It's nice having you on because we have, for the last couple of weeks, been chatting in... I mean, in your live have, feed yeah. and, and in parallel Instagram and so on. So, so it's it feels yeah. like you've been on in a strange <laughs> way earlier, but this is actually the first time we have a guest on. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm honored to be the first. I, I oh god, I don't want to make the obvious joke about the, being the podcast virginity. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you always remember your first? Was that the? <laughs> Yeah, I do. It wasn't a great experience. <laughs> <laughs> the podcast, I mean. A podcast. <laughs> Reliving it all again. <laughs> yeah, I, feel, I feel like you, you, you were the, the first, our first listener uh, outside of our own homes. because I, re- wives... I remember when you announced the podcast and the first, I think I messaged you being the first person to like, can I be on as a guest? <laughs> <laughs> like... Yeah, yeah, something like that. We've just had to get used to ourselves first, Thomas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think we have discussed having guests at that point before no. you sent that message and then, oh, yeah, <laughs> you could have guests. I mean, you <laughs> guys like, could okay. try to run a whole podcast by yourselves for however long, <laughs> yeah. but... Uh, from experience, it's going to get boring. <laughs> <laughs> so only, there's only so many things you can talk about with the same people. Yeah, yeah, that's, but, that's uh, true. That's the ambition, uh, at least, to have something going every week so we have something to talk about. Yeah. But, uh, well, it doesn't always <laughs> line up that way. We no. used to start I mean, off with some sort of plan, didn't we? And that's just been forgotten the last few episodes as well, hasn't it? <laughs> I think we have an Excel sheet on a Google Drive somewhere who said oh. set, set lists and topics. And yeah. I haven't edited that in like two months. So That's classic. It's the same thing at work. People spend months and months doing the big, huge plans and have documents on documents and spreadsheets. And then when, the, when things actually, when shit hits the fan, no one ever looks at them. <laughs> and everyone just makes stuff up anyway. So It's one I mean, of it's the like favorites. Sorry, <laughs> I was going to say, it's like Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> yeah, something like yeah. that. That's a, I was going to quote my boss because he says it's, it's not the value of the plan itself, but it's the value of doing the planning. <laughs> that's the one <laughs> thing he refers to the most. <laughs> yeah, I, I mostly say that it's good to have a plan so you know what you're deviating from. Yeah. <laughs> I have a spreadsheet full of ideas for YouTube and uh, every time I make a video, I add it to the done list because I don't put it on the list for some reason. Hmm. 
I, I put it on the list first, and then I get to cross it off and, and have it on the that, That's list. the idea, but it never ends up working the same, that, that way. It feels good to actually get to, to cross something off. And I get that. It I mean, it's, it's often when I have a to-do list, and then uh, when evening comes and I've done like one thing on the to-do list and ten other things, then I have to add them to the list so I can cross them off. <laughs> so actually, it looks like <laughs> I've actually done something. <laughs> make, make yourself out to be high achieving. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> Always I mean, be it's like, well, you could look into, uh, like, do you have a light uh, case of ADHD or something oh, like I that? Oh, I do. Because that is... Oh, I do. Uh, <laughs> oh, you no, make, no, you no. make a list well and then known. you do everything else and then you just you backfill your list to cross it off so it just matches what you actually did. No, the I, only times I, like, make a list that I kind of stick to is when I, like, have a really productive day and it's like end of the day and I'm really tired. And the last things I'll do is just like write down the, f the few last things I was doing before I went to bed on my desk with like, a, because I've got my desk to be like a whiteboard so I can always scribble on it. So I've got, so I always just write something like finish this thing just, just before. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I know where to pick up from. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, you know, it's, it's nice to hear that there are other people out, out there doing the same thing I have. Well, now I'm mainly using my phone, but I also had for a period a dedicated, like a clipboard mm. on my bedside table because I have those times when I wake up and have dreamt of something brilliant. And then <laughs> if I just turn around and continue sleeping and then I wake up in the morning and I remember I had a fantastic idea, but I can't for the life of me <laughs> recollect what it actually was. So now I have a list on my phone close by. But uh... And then you think that the idea was so much better if you don't remember it. But if you actually look at your notes and <laughs> cheesecake yeah, prom, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's another issue. You need to write it out because if you just, all right, I put down some keywords and I'll remember that. And that I do all the no, time. I put never. keywords in my notes on my phone and then a couple of months later when I'm cleaning up the mess, it's like, what the oh, fuck? fuck. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no, the common one I always have is I would just write down a note that just says, finish the code. What code? <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> what what was I doing? What was I thinking? No idea. Well, I guess I'll never finish it. <laughs> That's uh, another thing. I have I have fallen in love with these uh, small A5 size clipboards. Um, and I have four or five of them because I keep just having them everywhere in my workshop. And I, I need something. When I have an idea, I need to draw something. So I have it scattered around the house so I can draw on it. And of course, people are making fun of me because I'm also using uh, millimeter paper. Uh, and then I said, well, the good ideas need to be uh, at a certain detail level. But uh, <laughs> um, now it's actually have come to that point that I had one of them where I put a list on when I got ideas. And the thought was, I need that on my wall in my workshop so I can start crossing things off. But that just turned into being one of my future YouTube projects because I want to make a clipboard that works for me because I want a special kind of pen holder and a certain kind of layout of them because I also always put them in landscape. And then the clip need to be on the left side so I don't scrape my hands while I'm drawing. So, yeah, it's a, it's a spiraling... Uh, case of I'm just not adding on random has... project to throw off your <laughs> your plan glad i'm not the only one who's who's got like things that i need to get done but like there's a project involved so <laughs> i don't do it <laughs> i don't i didn't yeah. do the project yet well i could clean my room but there's this one thing i gotta film and everything was exactly like this <laughs> so i can't change it Oh, Imagine yeah. how much oh. we would get done if we didn't do YouTube. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. All Everything that time. takes five times longer with video. I actually caught the end of your live stream yesterday, and it's funny you should mention cleaning your room because someone was picking <laughs> picking you up on the, a mess in the corner of your kitchen, weren't they? <laughs> I was going to sweep before I started, but then something <laughs> ran long and I didn't have time, so there was just a pile of <laughs> stuff that I didn't sweep up in my kitchen. <laughs> 
Isn't it weird what people notice on your YouTube videos? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Amazing. I, I sweeped it up and then I made them watch an ad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think I'm getting paid for cleaning ad. now. <laughs> yeah, but that's. I don't know if it's a good thing or if I should be scared, but what people really notice in your videos. Like on the comments, what was that thing on the wall? And then you go through the video and okay, that shows in like a half a second, maybe three or four <laughs> frames. So it's like, <laughs> at what level are they watching the videos? And I mean, is it not interesting what I'm doing enough that you're going to count how many tiles I have on my wall or something like that? <laughs> Some people have special abilities. We call them autistic, but they like to count things. Yeah. <laughs> I only ever notice your toe socks and your sandals, Havard. <laughs> yeah, when, if you have those were issue. deliberately put dead yeah, center yeah, in the image. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually trying out a new brand of toe socks now, which are, they are brilliantly comfortable, but uh, the, the f foot shape form is not like 100%. But of course, if I wash them, they do like... Uh, change the shape a bit, so I need to get a, a pair of them around through the washing machine. What? <laughs> <laughs> washing machine, you know the one that, you, no, that cleans your clothes? No, clothes. no, I know yeah. the washing machine, but what's wrong with the socks? They're out of shape. What did they, some sort of bunion protect, um, corrective sock or something? Or <laughs> <laughs> No, it's... And that might only be me, but my, my clothes have a tendency to shrink a bit uh, in the first wash. <laughs> That's why I also lost my privileges for washing wool and <laughs> some of the more delicate clothes. <laughs> it, it sounds like you're just doing the whole dishwasher trick, the same thing that I do with uh, editing the podcast. You know, you just do it badly and then the job gets taken off of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You won't get away that easy. <laughs> so how has uh, everyone's week been? Well, should we start with the guest? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, so. <laughs> sure. Uh, well, my week's been uh, pretty busy. Um, oh, God, what the hell did I do this week? <laughs> A live stream? Uh, yeah, that was yesterday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are we talking about the week previous or the weeks that just started now? Because if we're talking about the week that just started, then that's just Monday. So. Yeah, just uh, the, the, the past seven days. If we're the gonna past be seven days. Okay. He's going to be um, problematic, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Not having that one on again. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> um, uh, let me think. Uh, well, I did, well, I recorded a video. Uh, that's coming out next weekend. Uh, it's about my little... Uh, actually, well, the same weekend this comes out. So, yeah, I, I sort of revamped my uh, my little RC 3D printed tank, which kind of got my entire channel started. Uh, it's this, this tiny little 3D printed tank with some motors in it and some receivers and, and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, and it got picked up on Reddit, where it then got picked up f for the, uh, the Raspberry Pi magazine. And yeah, and then like 5,000 people just decided to watch it on my channel. And that was like the sort of the start of my YouTube channel. Fantastic so it's kind start. of like, so it's kind of like going full circle. And <laughs> it, trying... hopefully that's the last video I'm making on him. <laughs> you, you put that, um, you put a reel or a, that on your story at the weekend. I was trying to watch it yeah, while, yeah. I was at, while I was at a wedding, but I couldn't listen. <laughs> Oh yeah, and that was just me forgetting. So I uh, yeah, I went to the park to get footage off of him just going around on different terrains like glass, some rocks and stuff like that. But then I realized the next day like crap, I didn't take any thumbnail photos. So I had to go back the next day <laughs> just to get some thumbnail photos. <laughs> uh and that's when I recorded the uh, the short sorry, not short, the uh, the story on my Instagram. Um I tend to not tease projects very often on my on my social medias until they're out just because my brain works in a funny way where it's like if it's if it's out there then there's no point to me making it anymore yeah i i feel so the same i tend to keep them under wraps until the like the video comes out and then i'm like okay well cool i have like five five reels that i need to release now 
<laughs> yeah, because I mean, the yeah. five reads that would be enough for a project. You don't need a, to do a build video if you don't that much promotion for it. Uh, depends. It, fe- what, it feels it like does. that in a way. Yeah, it's you know, it's, it's, it's the same thing. with movies. When you today, when you watch the trailer, you have basically seen the entire movie because yeah. they're oh, yeah, just cutting together trailers. the highlights. So, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a I pain avoid trailers like the plague. <laughs> I watch the first ten seconds. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, done. <laughs> <laughs> like, sure. But you yeah. said fan mail, or you had to go fan back mail? to the park to film for. Oh, the video thumbnail, the 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 image thumbnail. for the video. Oh, th- thumbnail. Okay, yeah, now now I'm with. Yeah, <laughs> because I, I was thinking that that would be a nice segue to basically asking about your setup because if i understand it correctly you are maybe the one who's dedicated most full time of us doing youtube uh like you, I, I think mean, you're putting in the most hours maybe every day definitely. i mean i quit my job uh over a year ago now because it was last october and then i just decided yeah you know what i'm doing i'm going full in and so far it's been paying off so uh yeah i've, I've put in some effort into sort of trying to make my videos well, filming them, <laughs> I've put a lot of effort into trying to make film them in a way that's not inconvenient and in a way that I can sort of do it quickly. But then the thing that usually slows me down is trying to get the bits of me talking. Because like actually doing the project, that's usually the easy part because I would like just leave my camera running in the corner doing a time lapse of whenever I'm doing like electronics or something. And I'll just like time lapse that. But um, it's it's the talking part that always takes a while. It's like explain what you did. Well, I fucking connected some wires together. How many times can I explain this? <laughs> yeah, it's this That's this thing plugs into videos. the pins. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh great. Luckily, I, I I did a poll on my YouTube community recently, asking people like how advanced, so like what level of um of of technical explanations they want in my videos. And most of them are like advanced. So I'm like, I take advanced to mean like, you don't have to explain much, just make the thing. And most people seem to agree with that. So I'm, I'm at liberty to just like make something and just go, look what I made. I'm not going to tell you how I did it. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, YouTube videos should be more inspiration than how to's, I think. Yeah, but then I kind of look at it the way I look at YouTube videos where like there's some things where I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. But then I want to dive in deeper and see like how they made it. So I I, I do get knowing, I I do get why some people want a bit more explanation. But um, yeah, it's, it's a balance of like trying to make the video interesting and talking about every single line of code that you wrote, explaining what it does. Uh, it's a tightrope. <laughs> yeah, but uh, apparently you're doing something right because your su- subscriber count is going bananas the last couple of weeks. Uh, you're I mean, you're it, really uh, close to your next uh, ce- celebration, I think. Uh, I mean, I've I <laughs> literally before we came on the call, I passed four four four. Oh, you yeah. passed? Yeah, it only shows uh, three <laughs> three numbers for my so yeah. yeah Congrats! So like, Congrats! Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Again, you heard um, it here um, first. <laughs> yeah. And by the time this episode comes out, it's 5555. Five, 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 so. yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think it's going to go that fast. But yeah, no, it's been it's been kind of crazy. Because so, yeah, it, it's just been October that was kind of insane. So uh, in October, we have um, uh, two conventions in London. We have um, EGX, which is like a gaming convention where like uh, a bunch of game developers get together in one big hall and sort of show show their new games and stuff like that. And then right after that, we have Comic-Con and they're like two weeks apart. So as I went and I, so I go and volunteer at those conventions because it gets me free entry. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, so as I went into volunteering for EGX, it, I think I just passed like 2000 subscribers and I was like, oh, okay, cool. This is fun. And then like a couple hours later, I passed like the the 222 mark. I'm like, oh, the hell is happening? (laughs) And like reception was like relatively bad. So I couldn't I couldn't check what like what exactly was happening. But it turns out YouTube just decided to push my washing machine video for some reason. 
<laughs> I have no Fantastic. idea why. <laughs> I have no idea why. But the funny thing is, I posted... So there's two videos that I have about my washing machine. The first one did, like, fine. It wasn't anything special. But then when I posted the second one, then the first one took off again. And then after, like, a couple days, the, the second one took off again. So I don't know what the algorithm was playing at, but it worked. <laughs> well, that's that's I, what I'm aiming to. Uh, I'm aiming to hit that wave hard. Um, <laughs> I, I saw you, you. I saw you already. You've got something wrong with your washing machine. What are you planning to do with it? Yeah, that. The coincidence is weird <laughs> because I was sitting here two days ago uh, designing some something in CAD, and it smelled kind of rubbery. And it's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Somet- sometimes you get a smell of something and then it passes and then it says like it, all right i don't know what that was and i was just sitting continuing drawing and then no it really smells like rubber and then <laughs> i went into the room where the washing machine is and it was fuming in there and of course to not put any more energy into it i yanked the uh, the power cable mm-hmm. but, but there is a delay there uh, I think it's a, a condensator or something that keeps the power up. So it takes a minute or two before the latch opens. And then I just called my wife and she came down and what the fuck is this smell? And then watch. And then I just opened the door and it just poured like black smoke out of it. And it's like <laughs> all the clothes are real. Everything smells like burnt rubber, but yeah, <laughs> something happened. So of course, as a, Having two small kids, uh, the washing machine is basically the epicenter of our entire existence. So it's like <laughs> we don't have time to do any research or anything. So my wife just went to the store yesterday. We need a washing machine now. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> okay. And luckily that was the, we actually got like the first day of the, the black week or a black month or whatever they call it. But, so. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I have been planning this year to actually keep my eyes out of certain tools because I'm going to plan on if if they pop up uh, during Black Week or something, then I'm going to snatch them up. But I think our our tool purchase this year became <laughs> became a washing machine. <laughs> you just make an unboxing video, like I got a new washing machine. Yeah, that's too late for that it's all already up and running but i was thinking what can i do to the old one of course there are there are parts there that i'm gonna pick off of it tomorrow but then i mean what could i do and i was thinking what about some rocket fuel inside which you could set off while it's doing a spin cycle or something but then of course i need to figure (laughs) out what was wrong with it to fix it enough for it to run properly for the two minutes i needed to (laughs) So, Why can't you just um, turn it back on again and just film it? It sounds like it's going to do its own thing. Yeah, <laughs> quite spectacularly. Yeah, a, well, it's it's now outside, so that that's a good. I only need good an place extension to start, cord. At least. Yeah, just maybe put a, you know, a, a, an open bottle of petrol or something like that inside it first. Switch it on, <laughs> come back. <laughs> you know, that's I mean, I say you just turn the drum into a barbecue. <laughs> yeah. But then again, it's like, I do want to pick the engine and some of uh, the pulleys and so on. So I don't want it to, I mean, break the parts either there, as so. well. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah You're not crap. thinking of the views, man. <laughs> <laughs> I could get like two videos out of that broken washing machine. <laughs> Easily. Yeah. I should, uh, maybe I should do like uh, the dismantling video, <laughs> like my first live uh, <laughs> No, 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 no. First, you do a uh, a video where you try to figure out what's wrong with it, where you take it apart, put it back <laughs> together, try to pretend you fixed it. <laughs> and then, and then the explodes. second video, you know, <laughs> and then the second video, you try making it smart by adding some <laughs> Chat GPT integration, yeah, but and that, then the whole thing blows up. It's like Chat GPT broke my washing machine. <laughs> so. But that's the problem. I I, I can't do that for, because what if it turns out it's like a two dollar fix and we just bought a new one? So I'm not going to tell you what that cost. <laughs> oh, don't. So I went to so. Uh, we're doing some uh, housework on my uh, on my partner's mum's place, and she has two dryers. One of them has been broken for like I think like three years, and she bought a second one 
because she because she likes the first one, so she was planning to get it fixed. But in the meantime, she got a new one, but it's been broken for like three years. So I got there and I was like, well, okay, let me take a look at it. I opened it up. There was nothing wrong with it. And then I found out that there's a little piece on the door that, that goes in the machine to tell it that the door's closed <laughs> and that thing broke off. Yeah. So all I did was put like a barbecue skewer in there and close the thing and it works. Yeah. So um, I, I did the same again. on our, our drawer. We have the one who, uh, who condensate all the water into a tank mm. and there's a pump there. And of course, it's something about there. There are no additives in the water here. Uh, so you have lucky. Well, th things have accumulated in that tank. So the water inside the reservoir, which tells the pump to start and stop, has kind of clogged up with some. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, uh, but something has uh, like a, a gel kind substance in the water mixed with uh, probably leftover residue of soap and whatnot in the clothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So all I needed to do, I was dismantling it and then just taking it out, cleaning it and putting it back in again. And I didn't even need to buy any parts. It took me maybe an hour. But of course, most people would have said that this is dead. And of course, the price on it and being a couple of years old having someone to come and have a look at it would be too costly. So they would just have bought a new one. So I'm really pleased about that. And now also, also I feel kind of connected to my dryer. So now I'm on a mission. I'm, I'm going to fix that into eternity. That's my main goal. How, how far can I bring that with me? <laughs> While we're on the subject of, your, of uh, dismantling, what is it with you in uh, dismantling old tech? Did an old piece of tech attack you as a child or <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I mean, kind of, but no, uh, no, I just, well, the best way for me to always learn stuff is just for like taking things apart. Like whenever I get something new, first thing I do is take it apart because that's just my nature. I just like to take stuff apart. So like it, it it's literally anything. Like uh, anything from Game Boys to my mouse to keyboard, anything I get that's new, I'm just like, well, I want to see how it works. So I just end up taking it apart. And that just kind of, it's just kind of, I've, I've always done it in my spare time. But then with, with wanting to have sort of more uh, consistent content on my channel, I was like, well, I have a bunch of old tech that I'm going to disassemble and break. I could just do it on the live stream. Like for the most part, it's just a catalyst for, well, for the most part, it's just for me to be doing something on the live stream when like, yeah. w because in the beginning, the chat is very empty. So you end up just talking to yourself a lot and <laughs> actually having something to do is when somebody comes in, it's like, oh, cool. What are you doing? It's better than just sitting there waiting for someone to come in. It's like, hi, yeah. welcome. <laughs> so it, for the most part, it's just like taking stuff apart. So for the sake of doing something, but, um. Yeah, no, it's just something I've always enjoyed doing. So just do it on the stream and have people tell me how not to do it. <laughs> not killing yourself. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Have you, ever... that. <laughs> have you ever had anything no. backfire on you with uh, taking your new, uh, your new things apart, not being able to get them to work again? And... I have to think about that one. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think that was my I have problem. to ask my partner. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't think so. I think gr growing up, I did that a few too many times where I took something apart and couldn't put it back together. So I got something <laughs> in the back of my mind that if I take something apart, it won't work anymore. <laughs> so I try my best not to take apart things I want to work. But as I'm... soon as that period is over, then then I go wild on it. And now I have a my pile is is when my, my when my kids are being restless and I don't want them to sit uh, on YouTube <laughs> anymore. We can go down in the basement and, and take something apart and show them how it works. But Definitely. then it just uh, ends with my most of my, my youngest kid. So, oh, this is a shiny thing. I want this. Oh, this is a shiny thing. I... So now his, <laughs> his wall in his room is filled with old circuit boards now because he thinks they look nice. Yeah, so I, I, never get nice. To, I never get to take any components. I never get to throw anything away. I was going to say, and then you come. No, 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 don't touch that. That is content. That is content right there. <laughs> that, that, that's for daddy. <laughs> I mean, it started off with my dad because my dad always takes things apart as well. 
I'm, I'm from a long line of makers and disassemblers. <laughs> my granddad <laughs> makes stuff and disassembles stuff. My dad does it. So I've just kind of grew up with it. But um, it also helped so much for a, quite a while. My dad worked at like a scrapyard where he would just bring me to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> so like Fantastic. there's a bunch of old dvd players and stuff like yeah cool i'm just gonna disassemble a bunch of stuff uh, so for the while for a while i just did a, did a bunch of disassembly in a scrapyard for just for fun really but um yeah it just kind of stuck i, have I some... dreamt of having a scrapyard when i was a kid <laughs> oh i still want one <laughs> I, yeah. I think we all have fond memories i remember we had actually in the early 80s uh, 90s we still had a like an open landfill and my mother she she would stop my father and me going because we would end up bringing more stuff back than we actually threw away uh, him being a radio engineer uh, he always saw the positive in like everything electrical and of course as a kid i saw a lot of broken toys and everything and i of course knew that okay but he could fix whatever so oh this is nice and shiny so it's uh so yeah and I, I still feel it. Like we have uh, like the landfill where I live now. It's you're not allowed to pick things, and that's a real bummer. They they have like a corner where you can place working stuff where people can like pick stuff up, but you you can't really climb into a container. And of course, it's health and safety these days. But in that big metal container, I see engines, lawnmowers, chains. Uh, there's a lot of things there that I could just yank with me instead of having to buy parts or anything, but you're basically not allowed. So I was thinking, I mean, it would be a real downgrade payment-wise, but what if I could start working here? I mean, one, <laughs> one day a week, and then for the, for the remaining four days, I can go full-time in on YouTube, but then I have a, se- a small part paid job where also brings me a lot of free parts. So, um, I've also been thinking that because in, in driving... Uh, those uh, heavy machinery to move around the containers and crush stuff in that looks like really, really fun as well. So I don't really see a, a downside of working there. Um, no, perhaps uh, the pay. The, the the pay definitely, but the responsibility, uh, machinery, yeah. free parts. I mean, the upsides are really stacking up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if I'd want to work or own a scrapyard, but I definitely like a friend who has a scrapyard. <laughs> it might be Because then that. you get I all the that. benefits of having a scrapyard, but not having to <laughs> deal with it. Okay. That's I'm, just I'm... greedy. I just want a friend. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find you one eventually. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but that's uh, that's the thing. I'm not going to stigmatize anyone, so we might have to cut this out. But looking at the people working at some of those places, <laughs> I'm not sure I would like to befriend any of them. <laughs> and then, of course, people would think the same if I was working there. I mean, yeah, like, probably. That, thinking that now. angry ginger over there, like, don't touch my part. <laughs> 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 the one going uh, picking stuff from people's hands. No, don't, don't throw it. I'll throw it away for you. Go away. Go away. <laughs> yeah. I'll take care of it. Uh, I've had to limit the amount of stuff. I, so I, I end up piling up the stuff for live streams. So I've had to limit the like how far in advance I'm I'm saving stuff up to disassemble on live streams. Because <laughs> for a bit I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll just keep bringing stuff. And then I got and then I started counting, and I was like, whoa, shit, I've got like five months worth of live streams here. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, crap. Is, so I started doing a, multiple. <laughs> is there a certain, is there something in particular you're after that you, is the holy grail for your live stream to, to disassemble? Oh, I mean, the, the stuff that I like disassembling for me, but there's, uh, that, man, that's a difficult question. There's so many cool things to disassemble. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I've I've currently got like a like an old like 2004 printer, and it's like really big, and I, that's going to be on my next live stream. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I like really mechanical stuff with a lot of motors, just to just to see how stuff like that works, like things like VCRs and 
and the DVD players not as much anymore because they're kind of boring. But VCRs definitely. <laughs> yeah, VCRs are nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with with the um, with the printer, with, I'm planning to. I'm gonna have an actual friend who does <laughs> who actually does electronics, so I don't kill myself <laughs> because <laughs> that was a problem on the live stream. But um, the idea is that I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna have it print stuff out. And as it's doing that, I try to disassemble it. Like open heart surgery. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> this is why I need my electrician friend who's like, don't touch that, you're fucking going to kill yourself, Belen. <laughs> I'm telling you, have some gloves and it'd be fine. <laughs> oh, I love that. So on, on the stream, I was, uh, I don't know if you guys caught it, but um, I was trying to disassemble an old CRT and everyone in chat was telling me that I should not touch the big red cable because I'll die. <laughs> and then my dad came into the chat and he's like, take the red cable out and lick it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everyone else in chat, don't touch it, you'll die. My dad. Do it. <laughs> so that that's, Dare you. that that does that describes my family perfectly. <laughs> nice. like, I, 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 I used to take apart televisions back in the day. I got a shock from them. I didn't die. <laughs> my my dad did a stint. He worked as a radio officer on a ship, and of course, in between travels, we worked with some friends who were. The, like running a radio television repair shop back in the days where that was actually a business you could do. And he got the the thing where when he's working on something uh, that has live current in it and, of course, a high voltage, he always put one hand behind his back when he's working because there's still a risk of you getting shocked, but there, there's something about when you do, where does your where does the current go? Yeah. And of course, if you have two hands, there's always a big risk of you shorting something. And unless you're doing a specific operation where you need both your hand, if you're just like, poking around at stuff, then you can just use one hand and keep the other one on the back. And I just, I made a mental note of that, not knowing why, but I also saw him do that a lot when he's just <laughs> probing around stuff to figure out and like touching and like his hand always ended up on his back <laughs> some <laughs> so i tend to do the same things myself no matter what i'm poking it's like one hand on the back <laughs> it works best if you're right-handed as well because then the uh, the heart is heart on is, the other side yeah <laughs> yeah kindly on the left side kind of on the left side uh, when i uh, studied electronics uh, we did uh, a test where you where you showed how how the amperage affected your hand so then you you did it with the right hand in a sink full of water and you put your right foot on a metal plate on the floor and you picked up a coin that was in the water and then the the teacher slowly turned up the amperage and then you felt your hand cramping and you couldn't pick up the coin anymore <laughs> uh, so that was did you learn make sure that we use the right hand for that did you learn electronics or torture kj <laughs> is there a difference <laughs> I, I think I chose wrong when I did marine engineering <laughs> it's like, it's just, sounds more fun doing the electrical <laughs> it might have been that my teacher was a sadist I don't know <laughs> I mean well, I learned by doing mistakes so let's move on uh, Paul, uh, did you have did you do anything else this week or was it just washing machine related uh, it, it's it's mostly washing machine related, um, but I got a couple of, I'm still trying to do or to complete the Turgworks challenge. Um, so I'm working on the cheese slicer. Um, and I, I, I need to really rethink how I do it. So now I'm uh, actually uh, splitting the handle in two and gluing another wood on it uh, to get a contrasting color because it's wasn't basically salvageable within the time <laughs> limit I'm now working within. And of course, I'm working on the hell quarter as well. So I had a good night's work just wiring up all the cables, uh, which is a repetitive work, which I now realized maybe that's the things I want to do when I'm venturing into the live streaming, because that is like not the holy grail, but I see the functionality 
is mm -hmm. there in YouTube, but I haven't really tried it out yet. And of course, uh, like Thomas said, it, uh, it will probably be a first and second run with me just talking to myself. But then I just realized I could invite you guys to just, <laughs> you want to spend an hour on a first badly attempt at the live feed, but I <laughs> do some cabling work. No, so, I'd rather yeah. watch you do it on your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, just going to point out every time you do something wrong. Like, I don't think you tightened that screw more enough. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's why I named my channel what I do, because that will give me a certain leeway of what I'm doing. <laughs> so like, oh, so I'm doing a mistake, you say. Just re <laughs> read what's on the top of the screen. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it hasn't been much progress this week, I feel. But I, at least I've spent some few hours in the workshop, and that's a lot more than I got last week so it's a win nice nice so how about you guys glenn uh, you dressed up sharply for a wedding but uh <laughs> tell us about that well progress wise last week i didn't really achieve much i finished the bench for the wedding um <laughs> that's something sorry, it, it? yes <laughs> yeah and the wedding was lovely i had a nice time there I didn't try and escape early or anything. Open bar. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I was driving. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, probably what, that's probably Should've why I needed to bus. exit early, yeah. <laughs> um, but on Friday, I got to go to the Harrogate Woodworking Show, which okay. was nice for a couple of hours. Oh, that, that's the one at the retirement home? <laughs> <laughs> Oak, Oakfield uh, creative messaged me later on that night and said, did it make you feel young? <laughs> <laughs> sure did. <laughs> I was the baby there. <laughs> good good God, but the place got so busy. You literally, I was only there three hours. And after two hours, you couldn't see the stalls. There was just, it was just people everywhere, old people everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's nice to see that there's a, a future yeah. in this line of hobby <laughs> and it was um, the exact opposite to Scapa Festival and it was literally all commercial it was buy me, buy me, buy me yeah. <laughs> just tools everywhere so it was nice to see the tools but, but... So, sorry I need to that's okay what you said there, KJ, that's going to be our futuristic because YouTube as a platform, of course, kids will jump on to new things all the way. So like that convention that Glenn went to, that's going to be us. We're going to have like, a, oh, we're going to this YouTube convention and it's just going to be old guys still doing YouTube <laughs> or reminiscing about the good old times when you we were doing YouTube and the kids is like, Oh my God! What are are they on about? <laughs> <laughs> they still look at things on screens. It's not programmed straight <laughs> into your brain. <laughs> yeah. Those old timers. That, <laughs> that's uh, I, I follow a guy on YouTube. He's been a programmer at the Blizzard and various uh, game developing companies. And he told me they at the convention they had a stand where they were presented a new game, and they had a mouse and a keyboard. And they had a, a like a game console, so you had two choices of actually interacting interacting with the game. And then they realized that no one was going for the keyboard and mouse; people were going for the controllers. But then they also shifted. So okay, then we get two controllers. But then the demographic of the guests changed, so the younger audience came in, and they just pushed the game controller aside because and they started touching the screen. <laughs> so it was a harsh realization that you now have a generation growing up that if you give them a game controller, they don't know how to use it. It's not like they're now growing up and touching the screen. And we don't know what the next generation after that, again, is going to grow up doing. So it's like... Do you think, do you think it'll the come full generation. circle? Just come full circle, won't it? And go back to where we used to do it as kids and just touch ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> That would no, be no, the no, best the, outcome, the... I think. <laughs> yeah. No, the next evolution is going to be the uh, the new Quest AR headset because you just drag everything. Yeah. There's there's been just... loads of people just like walking around wearing them in public because they've be the technology has become so advanced now you can just wear it in public and the transparency mode is like basically no delay so people are just walking around with a YouTube video just playing in the corner. 
<laughs> it's actually like yeah. really <laughs> advanced stuff. But yeah, so it probably just touching things in midair will be next. Yeah. Before you go people in front of a monitor narrowly. just trying to drug shit. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I think old then spy it... movies in hearts. <laughs> it's a sh- it's a short. I like the visual aspect of that, but I I think the we might not see that fully develop before we do the leap into the Neuralink uh, something that you don't have to touch and do anything in the air. You, you just have to think it. It's so interlinked with you. So and that's uh. I don't know. <laughs> I have thoughts on that. Um, how much do you trust uh, Elon Musk putting something in your brain? No, never. <laughs> exactly. Because I mean, like, I, I wouldn't, especially current Elon Musk. Like, um, well, that's true. But if you go a couple of generations back and you ask someone how much do you trust, and then you show them the what a smartphone is of course uh, if you go and you in like the long perspective you don't have to go that far before somebody will be so skeptic that they rather burn you to be on the safe side than to figure out what it actually is (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. so so mm -hmm. it might shift of course uh, and uh, of course I'm, i'm glad i don't have to actually live long enough to have to <laughs> take a stance on that most likely yeah, <laughs> yeah i just don't re- say that i was gonna take it to a dark place but then i remembered the note let's not talk about death <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it would fall in line with the uh, general yeah. topic <laughs> we're trying to keep away from it but yeah you know we might get to the whole cybernetic enhancement thing but yeah. world war three <laughs> <laughs> probably first yeah, uh, I think that we're, <laughs> we're far away from from someone actually connecting something into your brain, but scans from the outside. I mean, mm. just putting some something because I would not want. <clears throat> I mean, consider having a phone inside your head in five years. That will be so obsolete; it's scary. But having mm. a just putting on a cap and it's connecting to your mind in some way. It's really scary, but I mean that's doable. I mean, there's, well, there's I'd be well already, up for that. <laughs> there's already a streamer whose entire thing is that she wears like one of those um, the helmets that read your brain waves, and she programs uh, it to play games. So she literally just sits there with like her hands off to the side and just thinks about doing something in the game, and she just <laughs> plays the whole game like that. Wow. It's so weird to watch because all she's doing is just sitting there thinking really hard <laughs> is there proof that she's doing that or is just somebody on a controller in the room next oh yeah no no no. there's there's yeah. loads of proof yeah yeah <laughs> no it, it's it, i'll send you the link later it, it's it's yeah. weird to watch but yeah it is fun isn't that what, what... frustrating because it it doesn't work as well as just touching a button Here's the thing, she's... Go, 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 go. Probably, yeah. I mean, she spent a lot of time programming it, and it's going to be one of those things that you have to, like, personalize to yourself. Yeah. Because uh, I think she mentioned you have to, like, think about, like, moving your hand in order to, like, move the character forward and stuff like that. But it's just reprogramming your brain. Instead of clicking the button to go forwards, it's just, like, move. (laughs) It's a... Yeah, it's weird to see, but it, it looks fun and also way too annoying for me to program so i'm not gonna bother <laughs> do you think that but, affects her day-to-day just you know a regular life so it, and... actually yes so <laughs> it, funny you should say that it, she mentioned she has a uh, adhd but it's actually been like huge help with her focus oh, okay because you have to focus a lot more on the actual thing of like moving something so it's actually been helping her a lot more in day-to-day tasks because like she can now channel focus into something. <laughs> so amazing. I guess, yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing with HDHD that you need the instant gratification. And that's why you see people with that diagnosis, they, they tend to do well in things like they can sit for hours in video games because you do something, something happens and you get a reward. But that's me and tell, telling telling someone with age, <laughs> age, age, age dab, 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 uh, to, <laughs> to, to sit in a classroom for eight hours and read something, oh, yeah, and learn no, something, pain. where the outcome or the result or the gain of that comes 
down the line, maybe several years, it's really hard. So yeah. I think I mean, the the gaming industry and that is, if you can implement that into the learning scene, that will help a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I mean, education was hard for me. Pure, there was a lot of factors to do in my education that didn't go so well. So because I was new to the country and didn't speak a lot, a lot of English, where I came out of nursery, because Polish grades are different to English grades. So where I came out of nursery and I was supposed to go into year one in England, you get, I got thrusted into year three, which is kind uh, of a jump. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> oh. and add to that, that I didn't speak English. Uh, I can't read and write still because ADHD and dyslexia are like very well linked. So like majority of the time people were just like, oh no, he's just stupid. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, cool. So I went to special classes. I got to make pancakes, so that was fun. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, for the majority of my life, it's just like, well, it, and getting diagnosed was not easy because, like, my my teachers would talk to my parents and my parents didn't understand. So they were like, yes, we <laughs> son. <laughs> so for majority of my life, I'm like, I'm not going to get diagnosed. Uh, people are going to think I'm stupid. But, like, here I am. Many years later, I could do electronics, programming, and just because, like, I had to learn myself because the other people wouldn't teach me. <laughs> like I wanted to do geography. Instead, I was pushed more into the arts and design field because that was easier. <laughs> but uh, yeah, That's now so I have a giant map on my wall that I that I know off the top of my head. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think yeah. that's an all too common story. Uh, for people with, especially uh, for uh, for par for families that have immigrated, where the, they don't speak a lot of English, it, it, yeah, it's yeah, a common issue. That as well, and I, <laughs> I, I don't have the diagnosis, but I still struggled in school because I couldn't sit still. I, I'm a practical learner, so of course, I can take in a lot of theory if I can link it to something practical to use it for. So if, mm -hmm. if something becomes too theoretical and I can think of a way I could use that in any practical use, then I just zone out. And then, of course, if you do that enough, they will say that you are, well, dumb or you are having problem focusing or anything. And I've seen that. I have a lot of friends which got the diagnosis late and they said it's a relief because it explains a lot of things because they were just, at least the educational system in Norway, it wasn't equipped and the teachers didn't know what it was about. So if you couldn't sit still for eight hours and focus, then you would just, uh, you would, yeah. a disturbance. So they would just try everything to do to just get you to be not as included, to minimize the damage on the others. And you really felt secluded. And it's easy then to feel, okay, I, I can't do what everybody else is doing. And then you're like, the place where many goes to is like, okay, but then I, I feel dumb. <laughs> and then it's a downward spiral from there. So I know some brilliant yeah. people that has come out good despite of actually having a hard time in school which today if they started all over again they would get a much better follow-up and what would that have done to them in their upbringing of course that is only theoretical because you you can't really go back and redo stuff but oh. I, I heard on the radio today that someone did a study that uh, people in prison are this vastly, uh, this not the uh, the normal amount of people with some kind of spectrum, uh, because they they need that as you say instant gratification and not fitting in, and then they get get put with the wrong crowd, and then yeah, they end up on the being left <laughs> out of society, so to say. Uh, so it's I mean it's really sad. It is. Yeah. <laughs> on a lighter note, uh, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, why is the Mona Lisa trying to shoot a pasty with a bazooka? <laughs> well, the Mona Lisa's always there with the bazooka. The pasty sign is there for Havard, but he's not noticed it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing Great, is, so I, I did notice it because I did comment on it within the first five minutes, but <laughs> you didn't pick up on it. Oh, no. 
<laughs> but I still don't know what pasty is. I was listening to the to the half pint in the car. I was like, <laughs> I remember you asked me, do you know what pasty is? And I never got to answer, no, I don't. And I still don't because I've made a point of not actually Googling it. <laughs> oh, Joe, would you I... like me to tell you? Is it anything to do with pastry? Or it is. is it... So you know what a pie is, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's the difference between a pie and a tart? Just to get that out of the way, because well, let's, might... well, let's just let's just say that this is this is a raspberry pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I've like heard of those. Ones. Yeah, <laughs> they're a bit dry. dry you can eat them. Taste. It's not healthy, yeah. but you can. <laughs> it's a bit dry from my taste. <laughs> yeah. Well, a pasty is basically a meat pie, which is just arranged. They've just arranged the pastry differently. I think they were um, a Cornish invention, and the pastry is really thick around one edge, and it's so the workmen can eat them without um, washing their hands. Basically, you just throw the thick bit of pastry away at the end. Hmm. So that's the that's the boring explanation. <laughs> <laughs> There's this one clip that always makes me laugh. It's from the one show. No, sorry, from the morning show. Where he's uh, where the chef's making a pasty live on TV, and you put salad in it, and the main host just goes <laughs> salad in a pasty, you filthy pervert. <laughs> <laughs> freaks me every time, <laughs> and that is the correct response. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> It's, just, it's the only thing I think about whenever I hear pasty. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have pasties in Norway then? Uh, we, uh, we do, but it's not... Uh... You have a sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I obviously didn't know what it means. And I, to be honest, I still don't. I thought, it said, I thought <laughs> my, my dyslexic brain read it as party, but then the arrow was pointing it into the other room, but the lights are in this room, so... Yeah, yeah that's what I thought as well, that he said party, until Glenn said, why do you have pasty on your wall? And I don't know, pasty, never heard about it. Uh, I've heard about pastry, but... I think I'm, I'm more confused now than in the beginning of this conversation. Well, so I have to Google <laughs> pastry as well. What is the actual definition? A, and I need to see some pictures to link that there's a, to. There's a picture of a pasty just there, look. I think we call it pirog. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a, yeah, pirog. That's the same in Nor Pier Norwegian, yeah. No, pirog is like a dumpling. It's a meat bun. No, in... it's not. Well, yeah, but it, the, so in Poland <laughs> we have... It looks just like the one in the picture there. Well, yeah, but, but pasties are larger. Pierogs are tiny because no. in Poland we have the same thing called pierog. Yeah, but they're not that tiny. I mean, that's. Oh, I mean, they're like that big. I would say bigger. Well, it, Poland has a I different definition big. of pierog. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I it, think I, I think this is more or less the same thing, but different sizes and probably. This is brilliant because I I, I actually spoke to my wife about it today. Um, I worked four months in Gdynia in Poland and. Of course, I was so bored in the office that I went out to a local uh, cafeteria to get lunch. And they had a, a big pancake, but it was folded in. So you actually got fill, fillings like meat, uh, lenses, uh, everything you got. in. It's like a baked pancake of some sort. That's a and Yumiya Chan. Very good. Yeah, you, you <laughs> If you could write that down and send it to me, because I have at several points Googled like Polish pancakes, but I don't always no, no, no. get it's, what it's I'm like. It's like potato, it's a bit starchy. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, yeah. it's brilliant. And I, I want to like to see if I can find a recipe to actually make it. But when I'm Googling, I have never found anything. And then I tried <laughs> image search to see something that resembles, but then I never get what it's actually called or what a recipe oh, yeah. is. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can have it like sweet or you can have it with gravy. It, it, it's it's one of those all around kind of things. It's really nice. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. Now, Glenn has to do a little set, put together something for Instagram to show our listeners what it is we're actually talking about. <laughs> what the, the signs? Yeah, I mean, show the the different uh, the past, the the pirog and whatever it was that Thomas oh, just that said. Sounds, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, if you if you can if you can make a sh like a pie chart with the different kinds. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Brilliant. I've got a Sri Lankan friend. When I first met him, he used to crack up every time he said pie because I think pie means penis in Sri Lankan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always good fun being bilingual. You you always have those, and if your bra- <laughs> if your brain is wired to actually <laughs> connect those dots, there is a there's a lot of funny moments where you have to giggle for yourself. <laughs> No, me and my partner keep going over words that are the same in Polish and in English. And there's a, there's a whole bunch of them. Come on then, examples. Oh, okay. Oh, gosh, no. I don't know you're going to put me in. You uh, walked okay, into that well, one. <laughs> you started it. I mean, uh, there's like ketchup, which is ketchup. Basically the same thing, just okay. a slightly different pronunciation. Uh, oh God, off the top of my head. Uh, uh I can only think of condiments. <laughs> <laughs> so many of us have that problem. <laughs> there's there's a mayonnaise, which is mayonnaise. Very okay. simple. Uh, but what were the other ones? <laughs> <laughs> no help from off the screen. Yeah. Is, she, is, she, is she listening in? Uh, she's in the other room. She's probably got headphones on. Uh, <laughs> that's that's why I like about the the live or even your YouTube videos when you do something. Oh no, this is gonna smell or something, and then you get the live commentary for the other yeah. room. <laughs> um, sometimes I do it just because. <laughs> she doesn't like to be on the live streams, but it's funny when she is. So, um, yeah. There's, there's a few other examples, but off the top of my head, I, I oh, can't sorry, I think of them. Like I said, I'm not good when I'm not pre-recorded. Uh, no, <laughs> you can you can send us a list afterwards, and we can I will uh, do. <laughs> make something work in edits. <laughs> I'll I'll, uh, I'll get a Python script to go over the dictionary and find the ones that are the same. And, and you can all send me a picture of your pies as well. Save me having to look them up. <laughs> Yeah, we can do that. We can, or do we that. can ask chat GTP, what's the common words in Polish and English? And bring oh, me a list. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, especially with the new one, they've they've done a whole bunch to upgrade it, so it probably will come up with a decent list. No, I, I haven't actually... I've only used the integrated function in Photoshop, uh, the AI function there, but I haven't really set up an account to really fully start using chat GTP. But yeah. It's worth it. It is uh, it is worrying how good... I say worrying. It's really nice how good it is. But you end up relying on it a lot. <laughs> it feels like cheating. I mean, it's using a hammer cheating. But I, I mean, it's it, I mean, the is, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's a new to, thing. Yeah. If you're doing <laughs> knitting, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, the Let hammer. Me try to fix that CRT with a hammer. <laughs> the hammer is just an evolution of uh, just holding a stone or something like that. But this is something that we never had before: being able to actually communicate with a machine to get. It feels like cheating. I mean, we've had it for many, many years, but it's just, it, it feels like it's become a, a much more advanced in the last few years, but we've had it for a while. I mean, we've had something like Grammarly, which basically does the same thing for like many years already, not sponsored, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's basically the same thing. It's just very predictive texting. Uh, sorry, my partner put the kettle on. I wonder what that noise was. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, it's it's another it's another tool. I don't think it's yeah. cheating. That's how I, I mean, feel. Yeah, lasers, you know, um, the CNC machines. Exactly. I don't, I don't think they're cheating. This is just an evolution. Yeah. We had a discussion I mean, a... about it at work because there is, of course, the working in a concept and development department, it is like if you want to use chat GPT or other solutions to to actually tweak the text in your reports, you're actually giving away some of your IPR. And then, of course, it will be in that big pool. And if we are working in a very narrow niche and a company in the same narrow niche are actually searching something, there's a good chance that what we have put in to get a translation will then pop up 
in that the other company that's so that's a thing we are working on and of course um, microsoft have their own solution through bing that actually keeps the data within your firewall but not sharing anything out um but it is a really interesting topic yeah i mean that was a problem many years ago even when uh, at work they they put out a a big notice you're you're not supposed to use google translate for entire documents you may use it for single words, but not don't put everything in because then the competition can get a whiff of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm planning to just like host it myself, but uh, I can't afford the graphics the graphics cards I need for it. <laughs> but when I do, I will have a server rack that will run it for me. But that's a nice segue. You mentioned you were sitting in your kitchen, but um, I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> yeah. getting the vibe that you are joining a very exclusive club here, the the small workshop club. So I what mean, is actually your uh, square footage? What are you working with then? Oh, I have no idea what the square footage is. It's, uh, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas is just getting his tape measure out for everybody. Oh, for, the, for all the CMOs. <laughs> And that's why you don't and use a no, tape No, no, he's measuring the room. <laughs> trying to hook it on the other side. Hold on. Uh, my partner's just walked in and is asking what the fuck is going on. <laughs> yeah, I thought uh, you were doing a understandable. <laughs> it's about 10 feet from where I am. It's not that big. <laughs> <laughs> and we got it straight from the source. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. Um I'd say it's it's like 10 foot by 10 foot, but it's it, it's like the living room slash kitchen because we're in a like a one bedroom apartment and my partner has like a little nook for her. So I I have committed what was the living room slash kitchen to just be my workspace. <laughs> so uh you know, it's tight, a bit awkward. I can't really do any woodwork here because then everything gets dusty. But uh <laughs> I try my best. <laughs> well, I'm only about an hour away on the train for you, if ever you need to come and do some woodwork. Tempting, but that might be a bit... <laughs> I'll just getting bring back... a whole sheet of plywood. Yeah, getting me. back with yeah. the project. I just need you to cut this in half for yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would so no. do that just for the hell of it. That, that could <laughs> be a video, just the journey, couldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> just trying to get fun. a full sheet of yeah. plywood into the... <laughs> <laughs> on a here's, the thing. here's the thing in england no one's gonna no one's gonna look twice they'll just be like oh there's a guy with a piece of plywood on the train no, just they, keep going they, on with the day they won't do while you're in london as soon as you hit lincolnshire they'll look twice i can assure you <laughs> that's really good fun and i live very close to one of the largest ikea shops in norway and they have actually these shuttle buses going into oslo city center and of course, there's a lot of people in Oslo that don't own a car, but they like to get their furniture from Ikea. So if you're really <laughs> bored one day, just go get yourself a coffee and just get onto that Ikea shuttle bus because it's free and just sit there for an hour while it runs back and forth. Because then you can see people trying to fit whatever you can think of into a bus <laughs> really nice sitting there and watching them trying to play tetris live on a bus it's good fun have you been and watched that have you done that myself yeah no i i got the pleasure of uh, seeing the bus passing by from uh, the outside okay. so uh, I could put a camera on there and just live stream it that'd be fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah now that you mention it, I think actually when I was a student, me and a and a buddy went to IKEA and bought a, a two seat sofa and got it home on the bus. <laughs> that yeah. must have been weird <laughs> from the outside. Now that I think about it, I, I feel I feel I I can't really relate to a lot of the topics around IKEA because uh, my brother in law actually works there. And that gives certain perks. I mean, <laughs> I don't I don't have to even go in there and he knows everything. And of course, you can also log into the system. So everything is just fixed. So sometimes I, I just mention I need something and yeah, just come around, pick it up at there. And he just meet, meets me outside with the trolley and everything nicely stacked. And of course, since he's working there, you don't have to stand in line waiting. He can just go and fix stuff. 
<laughs> so half the fun of like going to IKEA though is just to wander around and look at the stuff you don't need. Yeah, you don't you don't have kids, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. I never planned to. No, <laughs> no, no, no me and my partner. Thing. <laughs> me and my partner have gone on like multiple dates to IKEA where we just wander around. That's yeah. great to do in, in in a weekday. You never go to IKEA on a weekend. No. Oh God, no, oh, that's true. No, uh, that's that's the main thing people do wrong. We the, have just... done that in, in the middle of the week if it's uh, like a planning day in the kindergarten or so on, and we can of course bring the kids to the cafeteria at ikea because it's very nice and then of course they can meet their uncle and uh, we could have lunch together and then of course it's <laughs> a lot less crowded then it's enjoyable and uh, i have gone to of... ikea just for lunch before it's like yeah, you love your, you'll have your kids growing up you know when you get a, a an uncle that's a policeman or something i want to be a policeman just like uncle tom <laughs> 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 I want to work at I want to work at IKEA. In my case, my niece and nephew want to yeah. be a YouTuber. <laughs> well, you're a bad oh. influence on them. I am. Um, I am. Um. I think that's the only cool thing I've got going for me with my daughter at the moment. <laughs> you take what you can get. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Are you going to do? Are you going to record a wrap up? <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, um... Thank you for I, listening to episode 10 of the number one cruise mistakes. Uh, I was, I'm Thomas from Mellow Labs. Uh, there's Glenn from number one projects. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's Havad from behind the mistakes. And there's KJ <laughs> laughing away, distracting me whilst I'm trying to do the outro. <laughs> Till next week. Goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs> That's a keeper. That's a keeper. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely.